Hello there! Welcome to my next video from the Dev Concept series. I'm Svetlin Nakov from Softunique Global and in this video lesson I will talk about database systems. I'll give you a brief perspective about how developers work with a lot of data. To illustrate just how much data, I will give you an example. Every time you register in a website, your data is stored somewhere. Now imagine that hundreds of thousands of people have registered before you sometimes even millions. All this data should be well organized so that it's easy to work with. This is where database systems or DBMS come into play. Systems such as MySQL and MongoDB. Okay, let's see the concepts behind database systems. Before we continue, make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you enjoy it. All right, let's get into this lesson. Let's start our lesson about databases. In this section, we shall learn some definitions and concepts. Databases, the typical CRUD operations, relational databases and NoSQL databases, database management systems, TBMS. I will explain also the concepts of data storage and data management, what is the difference and when we need to use databases. A database is a collection of data that is organized so that it can be easily accessed, managed and updated. Usually, you need to store data that will be accessible even after you end the program execution. One way to do that is by using a text file, but this is not scalable and doesn't provide any structure. This is where databases kick in. Modern databases are managed by a database management system, TPMS, which make it much easier for developers to store, retrieve and manage data. DBMS systems are also called, also called database servers because they manage data and serve developers through an API using the client server model of communication. In comparison with the text file option, database systems provide structure for the stored data. This makes database flexible and optimized for data management, storage and retrieval. Data is stored in tables or collections which hold entities uh, represented as table rows or documents. Entities have properties, have properties and or data columns. Entities can have relationships between. For example, one purchase order could hold many products ordered in certain quantities. For better performance, data tables may be indexed, which means internally ordered and optimized for faster search by key. Databases implement the classical CRUD operations. CRUD is an abbreviation. Each letter stands for a single operation. Those are the basic operations you will be performing on a database. C. Create or add or insert new data. R. Read or retrieve or query data. U. Update existing data. D. Delete existing data. Databases also give you the possibility to execute more complex data retrieval operations with data queries. Those can be for searching, filtering, sorting, grouping, aggregating, and many more. Database queries are executed using a specialized query language, such as SQL or Specialized Data Access API. Databases hold and manage data in backend systems. Almost all modern software systems use a database in some form. 
The data in database systems is organized in table holding rows or collections holding objects, key value pairs or other structures. The software which manages, retrieves and manipulates data in the database is called DBMS, Database Management System. Examples of DBMS systems are MySQL, MongoDB, Redis, Azure Cosmos DB, PostgreSQL, MSQL Server, SQLite, Elasticsearch, and thousands more. DBMS systems are responsible for data definition, data retrieval, data manipulation, and data administration. Data definitions is creating and deleting databases, creating and modifying collections, tables or other sets of data records or documents and defining their structure, fields and data format. Data retrieval is retrieving data, querying data, searching data, filtering data, extracting data, combining data, aggregating data. Data manipulation is inserting new data, modifying existing data, deleting existing data. And data administration is uh, users, roles, and access controls, uh, concurrency control, monitoring, replication, backup, and recovery, and others. Modern software systems use a DBMS system to manage data instead of implementing the data management internally. Relational databases organize data in tables and data rows. Uh, for example, an e-commerce software could have a table holding products. Each table row could hold product ID, product name, description, supplier and price. Some tables in the database uh, in the RTBMS system maintain relationships between them. For example, one supplier who has many related products and each product has a supplier. This is called one-to-many relationship. In relational databases, the SQL language is used to query and modify data. SQL, Structured Query Language, is standard database query and manipulation language. It supports simple and more complex commands such as select, name, comma, price from products. The software packages which manage relational uh, databases are called RDPMS relational database management systems. Examples of RDBMS systems are MySQL, PostgreSQL, MSQL Server, uh, Oracle Database, Web SQL in the HTML5 platform. We shall learn more about databases in SQL in the database modules and courses in the end-to-end -end software engineering training program at SoftUnit. NoSQL databases hold collections of documents or key value pairs. Document databases like MongoDB manage collections of documents such as products or vendors, where each document has a set of properties like name, price and description. Document databases support retrieving and querying document collections and creating, modifying and deleting documents. Examples of document-based NoSQL databases are MongoDB and IndexedDB in HTML5 platform. 
He will pair databases such as Arrays and Amazon DynamoDB store keys mapped to values. These key value pair structures are also known as dictionaries. They support fast search by key operation, but storing collections of data is less flexible. Key value data storage systems are good for organizing simple data. For example, a phone book can be stored in a key value store. Database systems are an important component of most modern software systems and therefore software engineers must have at least basic database skills. This is a real life example of the need of data storage. Suppose we want to build an e-commerce system. The data about each purchase order is printed on a receipt. But imagine you have thousands of sales per day. You cannot keep all receipts physically. That will take way too much space. Moreover, managing that data will be hard to searching through it, for example. You cannot keep the orders and receipts in a text file or multiple text files or a binary file. It will be too complicated to implement the CRUD operations and will work slowly. You need a better structure and system to manage this data. Databases give you the possibility to keep different data about the same thing in counts and properties. Multiple data objects of the same type can be stored in a table or collections. Such data objects are also called entities. In our case, we would have several entities in the database. Products, customers and orders. Each entity would have several data char characteristics which can be stored in data accounts or object properties. As you can see, orders keep data about uh, the number of the order, when it has been made, who is the customer, etc. This is the database table or collection for the orders. Each piece of data about a certain order is stored in a separate column or object property. This resembles an Excel, an Excel table. This way the data has structure. It is organized consistently in a manageable way. Each row holds a single entity, in this example, an order. As you may have guessed, this is much more optimized than keeping physically thousands of receipts on a paper or a text in text files. Database systems are very powerful in keeping collections of entities and implement efficiently the CRUD operations, queries, searching, and many more. There are far more reasons to use a database rather than physical storage. Data storage is not the primary reason to use a database system. As we said earlier, Imagine having thousands of receipts. It would be quite impractical to search these receipts unless they are carefully structured and ordered. This is easily solved with a database as it is stored on your computer or even in a cloud service. Database 
tables and collections can be indexed and this allows searching millions of documents in many seconds. While you have to cross the information on the paper and write over it, or even print a new receipt for the same order if something has been changed, with databases you can easily update the entire entity you need to setting an event. This is much like setting a new value to a variable. You've done this many times so far. Imagine having to search for all the orders of a given person. That would be very hard to do if they aren't sorted and most likely they won't be. Using databases solve this problem too. With a simple data query, you can retrieve all the orders of a given person. And databases retrieve and filter data very fast. Moreover, you can find many people with the same name. In, databa in the database, every entity has its ID, unique identifier, which helps the DBMS distinguish entities, customers in this case. The database engine guarantees that unique identifiers could not be duplicated. Databases can restrict data to follow a certain format. For example, orders may be required to have a mandatory date and the order date cannot be arbitrary text but should be a date plus time in certain format restricted by a certain time interval. The record of physical receipt will most likely be kept in drawers. They are easy to access, which is a security breach. Databases easily solve this by allowing developers to assign different permissions for the, the users. Some users can have only read rights, others may have the rights to do all the CRUD operations. Some users can even have more restricted access, for example, only to view orders and change their status. Probably one customer will be buying from the store many times. Every time you have to print their names, address, etc. on receipts, you will want to avoid redundancy of the customer data. You don't want to keep the customer address in the database many times, but only once. This problem is solved in database systems through keeping data about certain entity only once and referencing the entity by its IT from the other entities. In our example, customers and orders can be stored in separate collections with one to many relationship between them. Each order will keep a customer ID number instead of duplicating the entire data about the customer. Customers will be stored separately and each customer can be referenced by its unique ID. There are two types of databases, relational and non-relational. In this section, I will explain the difference between these two database models. The relational database model, which is based on tables and relationships between the tables. And the document model, which is based on collections of documents, for example, JSON structures. Okay, let's see this in action. Let's move on the two most popular types of databases in modern software engineering. We'll talk about relational, also known as SQL databases, and non-relational, not SQL databases. I will explain the basics of both of them, then I will compare them. Let's get to it.
There are two major types of databases, relational and non-relational. Now let's explain what a relational, also known as SQL database is. Earlier, we learned that databases define the structure of the data. The structure of relational databases is very strict, while of the non-relational isn't so strict. SQL databases regulate the input data, what their format is, how different types of data are connected, etc. RDB, RDBMS uh, systems manage relational databases and expose a universal interface for developers, the SQL language. Relational databases organize data in tables which hold data rows and each row holds columns. Tables in SQL databases have strict structure, columns with certain data types. For example, customers have first name, last name and email. which are text columns and data first registration, which is of type date and type. Tables can have relationships to other tables. For example, one customer could have many orders. and each order can have a customer. Relational databases use the structured query language, SQL, for defining and manipulating data. SQL is one of the most versatile and widely used approaches to database query and manipulation. This makes it a safe choice for most developers and especially great for performing complex queries. I'll give you examples of SQL comments and queries later. Relational databases, RDBMS systems, are the most widely used data management technology today. This makes them a good choice for beginners in software development. Relational databases are old and proven technologies used for decades. They have a clear but restrictive structure and this is good in many situations but less flexible in others. Relational databases organize data into tables of columns and rows. Each table defines an entity with some exceptions. Uh, for example, an entity order from the real world could be stored as table uh, orders in the database. Each column defines a piece of information um, about the entity. For example, the price of an order. Each table row is data object or better said, entity. Entities have unique key or primary key that identifies them, often called ID. This makes it possible to refer an entity in a column of another entity. That's the reason why this type of databases is called relational. Exam entities can be related to each other.
Let's see an example and explain this in more detail. Suppose we have a simple e-commerce system which holds customers and their orders consisting of ordered items in certain qualities, quantities. This is how these entities could be modeled in a relational database. The first table holds the customers in the e-commerce system. Each customer has ID, name, and email address. The customer ID column is called primary key because it uniquely identifies each entity. The second table orders holds the orders made. Each order has an ID, customer ID, date, and total price. If IDs weren't used, there would have been more, many more columns to keep the data needed. This would lead to redundant and repeat, repetitive data kept in the database. By referring to the ID of an entity, In a column, we can access related tables easily. When a table references another table by ID, this reference is called foreign key. In this example, we have many to one relationship. Many orders are made by one customer. The Third table is about the ordered items which are sold in certain order in the e-commerce system. Each order has ID, order ID, which refers to the orders table, name of the item, quantity ordered, and price. In this example, each item sold has a column referring to the order ID, uh, a foreign key. And each order has a column referring to the customer ID who placed the order. You can notice that there are two items sold with the same order ID. One. And the total price in the order with IDA equal 1 is the sum of the ordered items prices. NoSQL, also called non-relational databases, have dynamic schema. A schema is the structure of the database, which describes all its objects like tables, collections, views, and others, and their structures. The data stored in NoSQL database is non-strictly structured. Sometimes these databases are called schema-free databases. Properties of an entity Columns in the SQL database can be added dynamically. NoSQL databases can be based on several data models, several ways to structure data. Document oriented databases are designed to keep data as collections of documents. The most useful maths for representing the documents are JSON and XML. Document based databases allow 
the developers to evolve the database with the application's needs. Storing documents with all their characteristics and properties is very popular data model. The data stored in the NoSQL databases can be column oriented. If you are already familiar with the structure, uh, so we aren't going to repeat it. The difference here is that new columns can be added to the table dynamically over time. This data model is known also as wide column store. Graph based databases use graph structure with nodes connected to with edges as their data model. The graph the key concept of graph database is the graph data structure. The graph relates the data items in the store to a collection of nodes and edges. Nodes hold data, objects with properties, and can have many connections to other nodes, edges. The edges represent the relationship between the nodes and can also hold properties. Key value databases are designed for storing and querying associative arrays, mapping keys to values. They contain collections of objects which consist of different fields or keys, each containing values or data. These objects are very similar to the JavaScript objects with which some of you might be familiar. Searching by key is extremely fast, but representing collections of entities is challenging. Scalability is a very important characteristic of an application. Scalability means the ability to handle as many data objects and requests as needed. Sometimes millions, billions of data, even billions of data objects and operations over them. Enterprise applications need to be scalable. Relational databases scale vertically. Uh, this means that if you want to increase the volume of data handled in the database, you should upgrade the server you can increase the load capacity of a single server by increasing the resor its resources, CPU, RAM, SSD storage, etc. Or you can replicate the data to a cluster of several servers which work together and hold the same data. This increases the number of requests which can be handled in the same time. Non-relational databases scale horizontally. This means that you can upgrade the database to handle more traffic by sharding. Sharding means to split the stored data into several physical databases on different servers. servers. You can handle more traffic by sharding and adding more servers in your NoSQL database cluster. Uh, NoSQL databases scale more naturally than relational databases because they don't have much relationships between data objects. And this allows these objects to be stored in different locations, in different shards. As I already explained, SQL databases are table-based. And tables have columns and rows. SQL databases are stable, proven, and reliable, used for decays. The, 
Financial applications and complex transaction processing systems are usually built using relational databases. It is better to use an SQL database when you are developing an application that requires multi-row transactions. For example, a bank system would be better built with SQL database because everything is strictly structured there. Imagine transferring money from account A to account B. One of the database operations would be to subtract uh, money from account A and the other one to add money to account B. What would happen if something in between crashes? Account A would have lost the money and account B wouldn't have received anything. This is why there are the so-called transactions. Transactions. They guarantee that in case, in this case, if both operations are successful, changes would be applied together. Otherwise, anything would be rolled back. That's the reason why I prefer to use an SQL database. It gives you better transaction control, data consistency, security and restrictions and to fulfill that. SQL databases are good for complex transaction processing systems where the data is accessed by multiple users concurrently and the processing logic is non-trivial. In case it isn't clear what data you'll be working with and the structure of data is variable, you could choose a NoSQL database. NoSQL databases are also a good choice for small and simple systems such as block system con or content management system or mobile app backend. There are four main types of data models in NoSQL databases that we already explained. Document, uh, document store, which keeps collections of documents, white column store, which keeps tables with dynamic columns, key value data, data store, which keeps key value pairs, and graph store, which keeps nodes with relationships to other nodes. Let's see some examples of both types of databases, relational and non-relational. There are tens of relational database management systems, RDBMS. There are, these are the most widely used ones. MySQL, a popular, simple, open source relational database for simple projects such as websites. PostgreSQL, very powerful, popular open source relational database for more complex projects. Oracle, commercial relational database used by the financial industry and in big corporations. MS SQL Server, a powerful relational database from Microsoft, popular in the .NET development ecosystem. SQL White and Web SQL are small, simple embedded relational databases used in mobile apps and in quiet site quantite web apps. Now let's see some NoSQL databases. MongoDB is one of the most famous document-based NoSQL databases. Redis is fast key value store used for simple projects and for data caching. Google Bigtable 
means high performance, extremely scalable cloud-based key value stored from Google for a very large databases. Amazon DynamoDB is high performance, highly scalable, cloud-based, document-oriented and key value database from Amazon. Azure Cosmos DB, high performance, extremely scalable, cloud-based, scheme agnostic, document-oriented database from Microsoft. Cassandra, a popular, high performance, highly available, wide column database optimized to get the most recent data faster. A database management system, or DBMS, is a software used to define, manipulate, retrieve, and manage data in a database. It is a server software which takes data query or manipulation commands from the clients, executes these commands in the database, and returns back the results to the clients. Let's take a closer look at the way database management systems store data and the server architecture behind them. In this section, I will talk about the database management systems, DBMS, and the database engines behind the databases. We'll get to know how developers communicate with the DBMS. Also, we'll have a look at the database server architecture and its elements. The database management system, or DBMS, also referred to just as database, is a software that defines, manipulates, retrieves, and manages data in a database. While a database could be just a collection of data files, the DBMS is what makes it so powerful with its structure, algorithms, optimizations, and APIs. For comparison, in a text file, you will be able uh, to save whatever information you like, while in a database managed by a DBMS, you can set rules on the incoming data. DBMS systems implement an API, uh, programming API, or specialized language such as SQL to manage data. These APIs and database level languages provide data definition uh, create, modify, and delete tables, collections, and other database objects. Data manipulation, uh, add, retrieve, search, modify, and delete data from database, collections, and tables, the CRUD operations. And data administration, uh, we Optimize and maintain the internal data structures, define and maintain the access control, backup and recovery, concurrency control and transaction management, and others. At the physical level, each DBMS defines its type of data files with which it operates internally, the structure of records, indexes, and others. The database software then works with those data files, executing the commands you give it for manipulating the data. At the logical level, DBMS systems allow defining the data formats for the collections and tables, the so-called schema, field names and their data types, data constraints, and indexes. Some examples of DBMS systems uh, you may have heard of are Relational Database Systems, RDBMS, like MySQL, which is free to use RDBMS for simple projects, MS SQL Server, which is a product of Microsoft and needs a paid license. Oracle, which is also paid, heavily used in the finance industry. And PostgreSQL, which is open source enterprise level RDBMS. Non-relational databases, no SQL DBMS systems. Uh, MongoDB, 
which is popular document based database, Cassandra, which is a scalable white, white column database, Redis, which is a simple key value store, and HBase, which is a distributed DBMS for very large databases. Also, cloud database systems uh, cloud DBMS which could be both relational and non-relational. Examples are Amazon DynamoDB uh, and Azure Cosmos DB, which are high performance and highly scalable managed database systems provided as a service in the cloud. Most database systems are similar to each other. Uh, they provide data definition, CRUD operations, uh, and administration. Differences are more noticeable on large-scale projects. Developer communities usually stick to a specific DBMS, although it isn't set in, in stone. And programming languages are uncoupled with DBMS system. For example, C-sharp developers typically use MS SQL Server uh, or Azure as databases, while Java developers use PostgreSQL or Oracle or Cloud databases. PHP developers typically use MySQL. DBMS systems follow the client server model of communication. The DBMS system is the server and the software which developers create is the client. DBMS servers consist of database engine and data storage engine. The database engine is responsible for the implementation, execution, and optimization of data access, structure of data, and data manipulation. The data storage engine is responsible for handling data files, transaction log files, and index files, their structure, execution of operations, and maintenance. The client is, a, is software used to connect to a database and access the data through an API provided by the database engine. Let's see what the workflow is. First, you create a query uh, or command through the client, which is passed to the engine through its API. The engine processes the query and accesses the data files. Then the database storage returns the desired data from the data files to the engine. Finally, the engine processes the return data and passes it to the client for visualizing in a human readable format. Now let's talk about a typical database server architecture. Very briefly, an instance of a server is like an installation of a software. For example, you can have three instances as Visual Studio, the IDE used to write uh, C-sharp programs. This way, you can have more than one DPM, DBMS server instances. They can be of different types or just different instances of the same type. A DBM, in a DBMS instance, we have a distribution of database uh, the schema and all of the structure of the instance. One DBMS server instance can hold multiple databases. 
Each holding data about different software project. For example, if the same hardware machine runs a block and e-commerce system, these systems will use separate databases. Of course, the tables or document collections are also part of the structure. One database uh, or schema holds many tables with relationships between some of them. This is called a logical storage. The logical structure of data in DBMS systems. There are there is also another layer, the physical storage, um, responsible for the files on the disk. It consists of data files, the raw database data in our hard disk, and also there are transaction walk files holding the history of all changes. Did you like this lesson? Do you want more? Join the Werner's community at softuni.org. Subscribe to my YouTube channel to get more free video tutorials on coding, dev concepts, and software development. Get access to more free dev lessons and learning resources for developers. Get help from mentors and meet other learners. And it's all free. Yes, it's absolutely free. So join now at softuni.org. Meanwhile, you can check out my other videos from the Dev Concept series where I explain and demonstrate many concepts and technologies from the software development profession. Type in the comments below what topic you would like to see next and I'll do my best to record a video for you. Goodbye, see you in my next video.